Now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come. Willingly we come and surrender. And Lord, as we open up ourselves to you in this extended time of praise, Lord, we just pray, come Holy Spirit. Lord, this is not a show, this is not a performance, this is just all about you. So help us to endeavour to cooperate, to work with you, to listen to you. Uh, so Lord, where we need to be still, help us to be still. Where we need to linger, help us to linger. And where we need to speak life to people, help us to speak life. So, Jesus, be glorified and we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Light in the 
darkness, my God, that is who you are. Wipe away all tears, you mend a broken heart, you're the answer to it all. Jesus, wipe away all tears, you mend a broken heart, you're the answer to it all. broken heart, you're the answer to it all, Jesus, wipe away your tears, heal a broken heart, you're the answer to it all, to it all, Jesus. We make a miracle work, a promise keep Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle work, a promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every life. I worship you. You. you are here, meeting every need. I worship you. I worship you. spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so Jesus me 
still in the presence of God just to wait upon him we don't need to rush just as far as there anything that's on his heart for you for the church here just come into his presence remember this morning friends that God is for us He's not against us. You know, he, he, he chases after you. And maybe you feel like you're distant from God. Just remember, God's one step closer to you. He's running after you, my child. He's running after you. Father, we thank you this morning that you are the God who is the way maker. Lord, that you are the miracle worker. Lord, we don't need to dare say it. Uh, always, we don't need to lay hands on us. Lord, you can just touch people where they are by the power of the Holy Spirit. You can heal people on Zoom. You can heal people in this building. And Father, I want to pray, Lord, that if there's anyone that's sick even here today, and we pray in the name of Jesus that you'll heal their bodies because, Lord, that is who you are. And, but Lord, we've also sang, Lord, that you are the God who is the promise keeper. Lord, I really have a sense that for someone, they just need to hold on to the promises of God, that he'll never leave them, that he'll never forsake them. So, Lord, for, if there's people, I, don't know, I think it is someone that's online, Lord. Just I want to pray, Lord, that they'll know with an assurance in their heart this morning 
that God will never leave them nor forsake them. But I'm just going to be still just to be quiet because I really believe that you want to touch someone. No one's got a verse or a picture, just share it with your most friends. And I was just reminded again of the father that ran to the prodigal son. Uh, you know, certainly in Middle Eastern terms, that father would have never run. That was just not the thing to do. He would have never, ever have done that. But he loved his son so much. They ran to him. He didn't care about protocol. He didn't care what neighbors thought. He ran to his son because he saw his son coming. And that's how God responds to us. Whether it's a hard time, whether we are, uh, in the sense, being a prodigal son or daughter, or, as I said, just a hard time. But God runs to us, runs to us with open arms this morning and, and every day. Thank you, Martin. Ron's got something here as well. So. Lord and Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the voices that we hear of the children this morning. Because you wanted the children to come to you. You made certain that the disciples brought them to you because you love them so much. But just to remind ourselves this morning that whatever age we might be, we are children of God. He loves us whatever age we are, whatever, whatever we are in the world today. Lord, we just thank you for your love for each and every one of us. Because that love is so much greater than anything in this world. Lord, we just thank you that we know that you have the final say. That you have won the victory. Mm. So Lord, we just thank you and praise you that you are the one and the only one who we should serve. Mm. So bless you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. And Lord, we just pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to be upon this place and around Stonely, because whether they know it or not, people around here need you. The world needs you. There is so much going on at the present moment, which is evil. And therefore, Lord, we just praise you for being in this world and for saving so many souls and so many lives. So be with us, Lord, and bless us and just help us to spread your love around Stonely and the world. We ask this in your holy name. I thank you God for the message that is that is who he turns you into when you choose to follow him and no matter and it doesn't matter what you have achieved or haven't achieved in life it's who who he makes you yes Lord you're changing us from one degree of glory into another we praise your name I thank you Jesus that you came after me so Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory and all God's people said. I'm going to read a verse uh, this week, which has been on my mind as I've been preparing. Uh, I've had a real, and at the leaders' prayer meeting on Wednesday, uh, I had a real, I had a word for, I felt, individuals in the church. And I'm going to share that word. And I'm going to preach round that word about 
come to me, all you're weary and tired and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I felt that this was a word for us as a church family. And I'll, I'll go deeper than that. I think it's a word for our community, actually. Because at the moment, I, I observe people, I observe, uh, I love to people watch. I'm sorry, friends, it's just a nasty habit that I've got. But I, I, I've observed the people in the Broadway at the moment, I've observed people in society at the moment, I've got lots of burdens on their shoulders. And they're weary and they're tired. There's the, dare I say, the cost of living crisis, which is very real for people, friends. And I've told you before, food bank referrals are going up in our community. They're not going down. People who are facing uncertainty in terms of their employment positions, uncertainty because of health, Uncertainty, dare I say, because of uh, the political situation, regardless of one is one, if one is a conservative or not, I couldn't care less. But there is political uncertainty certainly in the air. There's uncertainty, dare I say, about just the day-to-day -day life. People are working exceedingly long hours just to make ends meet. You know, I'm having conversations with people out there who literally are making the decisions at the moment of do they feed their family or do they put on the electric? That is the reality of the society that we're living in. And even here in Stone Lee, and when people used to, when I came here, people called it Leafy Surrey. And, and there is an element where people are, they're materially prosperous. Some people are, but actually, can I say to you, the rich poor gap is getting increasingly wider. But regardless of whether one is affluent or whether someone is struggling, there's that element where people are tired. And, and by that, I'm meaning more than physical exertion. They're, they're burdened. And Jesus offers us an invitation. And the word is simple. What do you do when you're burdened and when you're heavy laden? You have to come, come to me. And it is, in one sense, it's not rocket science the theology. It's actually incredibly simple theology. But Jesus invites us when we go through those times in life, because I look out and I'll be honest and say, I see people in Stony Baptist Church this morning who are tired and weary and burdened, Jesus is saying, come to me. See, the, the old hymn writer sometimes says it better than, uh, than what I could say. Uh, but this is one that I'm certain that you all know. Turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory. And, yes, excellent. But actually, the invitation to come to him is to come to him not as a second choice reaction, but actually as a primary reaction, because our souls will find rest. Only in God alone. And actually when we come to him, he invites us in our fatigue. He invites us in our frustrations. And he invites us to come and lay those burdens down. I, I love the book of 1 Peter. It's one of my favorite books. But actually in 1 Peter, there's an instruction for those who are burdened with anxiety and with pain. Cast all your anxiety on him. He cares for you. Again, I, I know that you know the theology of that, but I'm not asking do you know the theology of that. I'm asking are you living in the right of the practice of that? That actually when we're burdened that he cares. 
for you. And actually, the more than he cares for you, that he loves you. That God is for us and that he isn't against us. Amen. That actually there's no wall that he won't kick down. I love the image of that. But can I say to you, uh, have you got your burdens? And actually Jesus is saying, actually, now I want you to lay them down. Come to me. Again, the book of Isaiah is, again, one of my most favorite, uh, ch- probably books in the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 40. God's people had been in disorientation. They'd been in exile. They'd been, dare I say, in the midst of questioning. But there's an instruction at the end of Isaiah 40, 40. He says, have you not heard? Have you not known the Lord is the everlasting God? And then right then he says, even young men grow tired and weary but to those who hope in the Lord he shall renew our strength and they shall rise up on wings like eagles can I say to you do you need God to renew your strength this morning I do and that doesn't come because I've got more than an hour and a half broken sleep but it doesn't come by six hours sleep can I tell you it comes by spending time in the presence of Jesus. Can I say to you, you can know absolute chaos all around you, but you can know that immovable, in undeniable peace of God. Come to me. Come to me, Stony Baptist Church. Come to me, Gavin, when you're tired. Come to me, Will, when you're tired. Come to me, Marn, when you're tired. Come to me. That's not a dig at anyone, all right? But I'm going to say, are you weary this morning? Jesus opens up an invitation to you, his child. Come to Say me. See, the reality is when we come to Jesus, it's not just that he renews our strength, although he does do that. Actually, you know, when we're weary and when we're heavy laden, that actually he gives us the strength to deal with every situation in our lives. Again, the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, I can do everything through who? Christ who strengthens me and a great assurance and actually that's written there I say not in the context when everything is rosy for the apostle Paul in fact it's written in fact when he's in the cells when the pressure is really on when dare I say when his energy would have been sapped he knew He could do all things through Christ who strengthened him. But he had to come to Jesus. And he willingly invites us, come, 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 come. If I want you to get one thing from the word this morning, it's just that simple invitation. Jesus says, come to me. Do you know that Jesus really cares about not just the, the big things in your life, but Jesus really cares about the small and significant things in your life too. Those things, dare I say, which just unsettle our peace sometimes, because sometimes it's those things that leave us tired and leave us weary, those small nitpicky things. Well, Jesus cares just as much about those things as the big things. But see, Jesus doesn't just come with an invitation to come to him when we're weary and laden and burdened. He says, come to me and find rest, peace, 
joy. And can I say to you, that rest, dare I say, there's a little echo of the book of Deuteronomy there. It says, let the beloved of the Lord rest secure in him, for he shields him all day long. And the one the Lord loves rests between his shoulders. And as Christians, it's a wonderful assurance to know that we can lay our heads down tonight on the soft pillow of God's sovereignty. That's what Charles Spurgeon said. He's a good Baptist, so it must be right, right? Yeah. But actually, can I say to you, do you need to lay things down and find your rest and lay your head on the soft pillow of God's sovereignty? So when you look at your life and you're seeing that you're, there might be chaos and there might be crisis all around you, can I say to you, God is in control. We can find rest in that. It took me to a prayer meeting which changed my life forever. You know, prayer meetings can change your life, right? And uh, we were doing it with young people, and I was a young person at the time. I was 17. And our youth pastor reopened up uh, just for the time for people to share. And then there was a, a young girl called Claire. Not my Claire, but a different Claire. And uh, she said, I've got something I want to share. And Claire never shared once at these half nights of prayer. Never once! And she said, you know, I was reading my girly magazine. I think it was, this is a prayer meeting, that's a lot, because I was holy and devout, you know. And she said, I read these words. God is closer than you think. Well, that must be a really holy <laughs> girl's magazine, wasn't it? But then she said, I put it down in my girly magazine and then she said, I did the Christian thing, and then I picked up a book. And in the Christian book was the words, God is closer than you think again. And she said, it jumped off the page. We had half nights of prayer every month as young people in Wester Hills. So when I was 15 until I was probably about 23, every Friday night. We used to cry out to God from seven to about half three in the morning, right? They were intense. But if you ask anyone that was at those prayer meetings, they always say, remember, God is closer than you think. And I think that is the word for someone here. It's not just an invitation to come to Jesus and find rest. But actually to hold on to the fact this morning as a church and as individuals that God is closer than you think. You know, that actually when we go through the times where we find rest, sometimes we have to bring and lay down those fears because fear paralyzes us from knowing God's rest. We have a wise leader in our church. I won't say which one. They're all wise. So I'll keep them humble. But this is what his, uh, one of his illustrations is. It says, Do you know what fear is an acronym for? False evidence appearing real. I quite like that. But actually, but sometimes we are, even as believers, we are gripped. We are overwhelmed with fear. Can I say to you, the book of 1 John has some wonderful words. It says that God's perfect love casts out all fear. So dare I say, if you want to know rest with Jesus and want to enter into that rest, do you have to submit to him and bring to him, I think it was verse 18, your 
fear this morning. Well, see, when we get to that place, it's not just that God lays down the cast out that fear, but God wants to refresh us, his children. I firmly believe this this morning, and his love. I'm just going to say the most deepest theological discovery that you'll ever discover is this. Jesus loves you. Full stop. Think about that. Just think about those words. Jesus loves you. Yeah, we go through times where we're burdened. Yes, we go through times where we need to lay those things down. But actually, sometimes when we lay down those things, we can know not just God lifting our burdens, not just that he cares for us, but he wants to refresh you in his love. I'm going to read a couple of verses from the book of Romans. You'll be glad to know I'm preaching shorter this morning because it could be a long sermon. Here is what the word of God says. Who shall separate you from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, can tribulation separate you from the love of God this morning? No. Distress? No. Persecution? Famine? Nakedness? Peril? Sword? No. Then he says this. I'm reading from the New King James. Oh, I didn't know how to do that. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Why am I sharing those verses? I just think God wants to remind you, nothing in your past which has robbed you of that peace, nothing in your present, and nothing in your future will ever be able to separate you from the love of God. But the question is, will you come to him? Well, the people of Stonely, the crowds that are walking by the grave, you can imagine them at the moment. Will they come to him? I has to said, I don't mean this is a word just about the people out there. I think this is a word for the people in here. The second part of the word was not just about the invitation to come to him. But this words that God gave me was this, that there was people who were, and this is a strong word. I know it's a strong word. Gripped with fear. Gripped. Shackled. Pardoned. And Jesus is saying, come to me. Coming into land. I love the old of some old hymns. And I love the words of some new hymns. So you're going to get both so I can be inclusive. All right. If you're an older hymn person, you'll probably remember singing from the redemption hymnal. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, and that Jesus is very near. It's great truth, isn't it? And it is absolutely true. But this is the song which has really spoke to so many over the last five years since it was written. I'm no longer. A slave to fear. I am a child of. Oh. Thanks, Dominic. That was great. 
But can I say to you, do you need to come to him? Do you need to lay down things? Jesus is offering his rest. But you need to come to him today and tomorrow. His arms are open wide. The question is, will we respond to his gracious invitation? And I pray that we will. You can't preach a sermon like this and say, right, Jesus says come. And then not do anything about it. I'm going to offer you the opportunity for prayer ministry. And Jesus is here. And maybe you aren't even burdened. Maybe you just want prayer because you just need to be refreshed in the Father's love. That's a great thing to pray, isn't it? Father, just come fill me afresh with your love. And Jesus wants to do that just as much. Let's come to him. Come to him, church. And know that he's near. So I've got prayer. Me and he's over here. And maybe you just want to come and you maybe even don't want prayer ministry. You just want to be refreshed in your Father's love. And you just, for sometimes I, I find that I help home my own quiet times just simply to kneel and to say, Father, I want to receive from you. Just indicate that to us. And we'll happily just pray for you and bless you quietly. But I do think we need to do prayer ministry for people this morning. But Jesus is saying, come to me. Will you come and receive his rest? He's willing. The question is, are you? So Jesus says his burden is light, but you have to put off the burden you're carrying already. And a lot of our burdens comes from the expectations of others and the expectations of ourself. And sometimes, even from ourselves, they're false expectations. They're not who we are. And I think part of the coming to Jesus is to have the laying off of false burdens. In fact, lay them all down. And then he'll give you his burden, which is light. And the things that are really important, he's got that burden for in you. So you can trust him. Mm. And um, the fear thing is also key. Um, can you trust him to provide what you need yes you can he's good mm. but so to echo gavin in terms of coming forward to prayer it's also to put off those false expectations whatever they are they're not what god's got in store for you and sometimes you have to sacrifice good things to make room for better things so it's wisdom as well to know the difference between the two Thank you, After the word that I had that Gavin said about come to me, all you who are weak and weary and find rest, he said, my burden is light and my yoke is easy. And often when we are in control of our lives, we're hard masters, but he's not. Thank you.
child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. child of God. He's for you, he's not against you. He's a good, good father. He's a good father. It's who he is. There's no shame. There's no shame here. Jesus just says, come. Come, I can sense a battle for someone. Come, just see, because he is a good, good father. I've heard a thousand stories of what they
It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Lord, you are a good, good Father. And Lord, we believe that you have spoke to us today. You've been here by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I want to pray that each one here will leave knowing that God is a good, good Father. But also I want to pray for each one here that they'll leave here different from the way that they came in. That they'll come to you with their weariness, their burdens, and that they'll find rest. Because their soul finds rest in God alone. So Lord Jesus, may we go from this place step and we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you for coming.